Hello and welcome to the Pew Pew Show. I'm your host, Dean, and I'm joined by Andy and Mini-Me. Mini-Me, your wardrobe uh, malfunction tonight. Thank you, wardrobe, for dressing us exactly the same, but uh, what do you reckon? Who looks better? Uh, put it in the comments. Who wore it better? Anyway, most importantly, stick around. We've got a great show tonight. Are you ready? Stand by. That's right, Dean. We've got an interview with a very special guest today. IPSC Victorian Section Coordinator, Cookie. Not only is he Victorian Section Coordinator, but he's also a master grade shooter in here and pretty much all around top like with a beautiful smile. That's right, Scott. But first, let's take a look for the New South Wales State titles. <laughs> so, look, as you can see, uh, there's no footage from the New South Wales State titles because you're not allowed to film on the range. That is a stupid war, seriously. It is insane. As if, let's just keep it a dirty secret, like it just doesn't happen. Oh, no, we don't exist anymore. No. So not to get into the political side of it, but I do really think that that is a, a, a rule or a legislation that should be changed. It's, it's just silly. Yeah, look, comment below if you want that legislation changed. I know everyone in New South Wales is going to be commenting below, you change it, change it, change it. Yeah. Now, I don't blame you. I think it should be. And, um, so this one's been a cracker. It's been super hot. Um, I think the last one was, I think you went to it, Scott. I did go to the last one, and it was the complete opposite. It wasn't cold, but it was just torrential downpour. But uh, saying on this one, we had one person that actually retired from the match because it was that hot and couldn't get his head around it. Yeah, well, this is the thing. I mean, if you went to the Darwin, you remember what Darwin National, so nobody can hear about it. I arrived there for the Ironsides match after, and then all I heard was all the Stories of people being taken away in ambulances due to uh, heat exhaustion, people being DQ'd, making silly mistakes. So that was one of them. Those, uh, those, uh, look, you did very well regardless. So, uh, stage 16 before I got DQ, you're running backwards and sort of went, oh, I saw a target out of a peripheral, a peri we get a peripheral vision. <laughs> it sort of went like that and pulled back, dropped my shoulder, and I got called and let's, uh, well, we can laugh about it now. We can. Uh, yeah, we can. The DQ's happened. But, you know, these extreme weather conditions, uh, you, you know, we, we, we're shooting one match in, you know, middle of summer and it's really hot and then we're shooting when the weather changes, it's really cool or, or wet and boggy and muddy. So this, these these conditions are kind of separating well. In Blacktown last year, we had mud up to beyond my knees. It was absolutely crazy, slushing through the mud and trying to actually do a stage slushing through the mud. My red dot popped off on my battery. My red dot popped off on a 32-round stage, and it was all wax. The whole lot of it was a, a long-distance stage. Battery, nothing, no sighting. Uh, it was crazy. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. That's practical shooting, right? That's exactly right. And as I was going to say, it does separate the man from the boys. It's those who can stay in the game and not let those things get to them. You're wet, your feet are wet, your socks are wet. Everything, maybe your guns work, yeah, but, but <laughs> your, your mags are full of mud. You've got to get past that and just deal with it and move on. And maybe accept that probably everybody else is going to have a bad stage due to those weather conditions. You just stick with it. Yeah, 100%. That's what we're going to do. It's back to push it. It's, that's easy and, for us. And you've, um, you've been doing level uh, level one at the club, um, level two out of PPLA. Yep. You've got a little bit of weather conditions. How do you reckon you'd handle it? Um I would reckon I would have absolutely failed at the moment. Oh no, there's a <laughs> fact about I mean, we all fail, but it's all fun and it's a, it is practical. So, you know, you yet to sort of jump into that part. That's it. It would have been absolutely good fun to experience that and get through it, for sure. I mean, the guys that did um, and ladies that did do a good job on letting those conditions. Well, oh, they're at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. That's the ball well, there. Uh, speaking of leaderboard, let's pop the results for the New South Wales state titles up on the screen now for you all.
and uh, well done to all the winners in what looked like a really tough competition. All right, now it's time for our Hold My Beer section. Today we're going to take a look at, I think, what was Tim's best performance at the state titles and sale, and it got a little bit tricky for some people. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of movement, we're going to move on to Ricky Leaks. And Ricky's going to talk to us about movement and shooting on the move. For this week's Ricky Leaks, we will focus on shooting on the move. So it will be broken down into three parts. Um, the first part will focus on the lower body, then it will be the upper body, and the third part now will be the actual shooting. And shooting on the move, um, everything needs to be on a stable platform, okay? So basically what you want to do is to roll your heels away and shoot it, okay? So the way it would work, guns unloaded, okay? shoot right away. You can see my heels, you just roll it. When shooting on the move, your upper body should be all squared up. Should be that way. It shouldn't be leaning to one side, on the other side, it should be all squared up. So, that's unloaded, okay? So, it should be, when you do it, it's squared up that way. If you're shooting that position that way, or squared up that way. Okay? Focusing now on the practical shooting part. Okay? Got loaded. Okay. Let's see. How you shoot on the move. Okay, let's take a look at Rafi's gadget. Hey guys, I'm just here to show you the CD slash double alpha zippered bags in storage case. The good thing about this case is that it allows you to have that extra security in terms of your magazines because I know a lot of people like to place their magazines uh, in their range bag, but it can sometimes when, when the range bag moves around a bit the magazines tend to fall off its pocket so I tend to use uh, this case just to have that extra bit of security so as you can see you can fit about six uh, double stack magazines or 12 uh, single stack magazines so you can fit quite a few mags in here the good thing is that it's a pretty small case and you can also put your name on here too pretty accessible so highly recommend I love it how there's individual pockets. You can make sure all your mags are in there, pack it away, not losing anything. Absolutely, I could read more. Uh, I just got mine a couple of months ago, but prior to that, I would pack all my range bag up real nice, ready to go for a shoot. For some reason, by the time I got to the range, I'd open it up and my mags would be all over the shop. I just don't have that problem anymore. I just love the way that they're, they're measured perfectly to fit in your range bag. Yep. You can only fit, fit it um, vertically in the top, Yep, and it falcros actually to the top. Or you can slide it in just under your pistol case in the bottom part of the range bag. For sure, and you can just grab them when you need them. Absolutely. And now it's time for our interview with Cookie. Not only is Cookie the Victoria State Coordinator for Australia, but he's also a number one. He's a top bloke. Number two, he's a master road shooter. Let's see how he puts all that together. Hey, let's do up into the Pupi Show. Thanks for having me. It's great to be awesome. Hey, um, what we want to get into is uh, finding out how you got into IPS Sydney. Okay, well, uh, I'm in our reserve, as you know. Okay. A bunch of us uh, realised that we were getting enough range time uh, to go with handguns. So we joined up at the Calibre range, uh, we used to be in Thomas Town, the indoor range. Okay. AFP's train there, and my mind was like, yeah, come down. So we're down there, and we had Moss and him teaching us uh, basics for IP to see. Moss, who's said to you on that? Here we go. Hey, Moss. Yeah, that, that. Uh, I was using an M&P that belonged to Mossy. Right. A few, a few matches down there. Uh, but then it was a bit of a gaff. And, um, got deployed to uh, overseas with the army, came back and got back into it, and started competing about 2012. Um, but, yeah, at that point, I was at uh, Victoria Police Pistol Club. Boss, awesome. So, Al, I know that you do two jobs, and you're the section coordinator for IPSC Victoria. How do you fit that all in? Uh, a bit of time measured, and uh, um, good team that that I can rely on to help me get there. To help. Uh, a shared diary with the wife um, so that everything is planned months in advance. 
And so digital technology for shared dough um, was in awesome. <laughs> I'd strongly recommend. Yeah. And, and um, we have as many brand points as I can by doing as much as I can at home and, um, and, and more. There's not just two jobs. It's to balance between family, it's goals to an actual shooting. Yeah. Which is another question I was going to ask you. Not only are you doing all this, but you're also a master grade shooter. How the hell did that come about? Uh, it took some time. Uh, it didn't happen that right. Yeah, I had to train for it and to work pretty hard for it. And uh, yeah. So starting off, you would be half a grade and then you would add to the shoot match and then get your first grade. Yep. You started D or C or? Um, I was C grade after my first um, SS, oh, say titles actually. Okay, great. Yeah, we're done. Did you put the integrate here? Right, so being a master grade shooter, what was the hardest jump? C to B, B to A, A to master grade? Oh, definitely A to master grade. To go A to master grade. That makes sense. We know them. Well, uh, Got me fly through mines. Yeah, and first grade, so the first grade uh, turned well, got the master grade uh, 2018. Wow. And so that's hard, it's a bit of work. Yeah. And then Grandmasters next. Well, you kicked off by the area. Yeah, and the scene. There's a lot made you can do it. Thank you. Not only, but you're also an R.O. Uh, part time. Part time R.O. I understand that, but as an R.O. myself, it's a really hard to concentrate on the shooting. There's a, there's a certain aspect where you have to back the, the grading up. Or down to actually RO2. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, in my time, I found uh, different, different ways of managing shooting as an RO. Yeah. And then I like the pre match better. But we're going to talk about it. I, I, did, I, need, I need some tips on the hand act. We're trying to balance that out and get forever C grade gear out of C grade and, and actually competitive. What you work about? I mean, did it get as a time management thing and, and where to apply certain aspects of the game? Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. What I find is I. Back off on shooting uh, when there's not to be big batches coming up, and I roll up to more shooting when there are big batches coming up. And you just recently shot the uh, New South Wales State Trials as well. I did, yeah, and tough bench. There's a lot of different talk about that, mate. Well, well look, uh, it was on the site uh, at a range that doesn't want to run a lot of like things. So they, they have rules for shooting in the line, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, they don't have a lot of stage props. Right. No, but that, they're still pretty good. It was challenging. So they invested with what they had and dropped it. Awesome. That's all we can ask for in my BSA. Absolutely, yeah. And sometimes you don't need the props. Sometimes people actually don't take into account the uh, the restrictions of the ranges as well. Well, in New South Wales, there's no shorter restrictions. Well, but exactly. Hence, before in a show, when we couldn't have any footage. Yeah. Hey, Joel, what did you have? Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, I didn't really enjoy that part. Well, no, you don't. You've got the whole um, shooting out of your comfort zone. Yet to hint for the known foot. And you've also shot the world shoot. I did. In Thailand. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And how did you, how did you place in it? Uh, I came 99th overall. Bits of 1%. So you are in the top 100 shooters in, in the world. Yes. But don't keep it. Nothing. Right. No, thanks. You wrap the laser to the Brooklyn of the It's a achievement just to get there to start with. But to, but to actually rank, that's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, we're actually going to throw some clips up, uh, some photos up of, of Cookie's world shoot. Because... Between you and me and everyone else, I watched the opening ceremony, Jewish opening ceremony. So the, if you guys watch the opening ceremony, this is the man that has more camera time than anyone else I've ever seen in my life. The camera loved him. But, 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 uh, and I hear that was messaging. What would you have thought? I cut the camera. Uh, well, and if you get to watch with Cookie's footage, you'll see uh, Cookie has an interesting breathing pattern where he actually sounds like he's running a turbo and you hear the blower valve going here and now again. It's just a... <laughs> yeah, like, what are the from there? Um, so that comes from a combat breathing technique we've taught in the arm. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it kind of stuck a really bit of water. And I like this. It took me actually quite useful, actually, to help you, you know, oxygen your body, blood beneath the pump to get you moving. Out of works room. Makes a lot of sense. Sam, he's master. I swear be on C. Yeah, I'm mostly water. I've squatted with the cookie a couple of times. And um, one thing I, I will say about uh, squatting with you, is uh, you don't tolerate negative speak. And so I actually cooperate you on that because it certainly gets this like me going, oh, that didn't go down well. Okay. He actually brings squad up with that. That's your mindset and passing that off. Yeah. Well, that's something I've learned and I had to work on um, because obviously while well, I was new to the sport, I didn't have tactical training. And yet you see how well that probably applies. And yes, so obviously it doesn't. And uh, you have skills, but you have no idea how to apply it. Yeah, I'm conscious to them. So. That and a bit of uh, Steve Anderson and his uh, positive mindset. Oh, that's no. Nah. How's it going, mate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. The positive imprints. I'm a big believer in that. But then you kind of then do these other weird things like juggling. <laughs> yes, it's about just it's about that. I mean, I didn't end up squatting and you felt with the top of our road with you. I'm Zim. I've never seen you I've seen you dance. Oh, right. 
Yeah, the, the boom walks. I don't know. Send the dancing. And I said, that, that's yeah, what I'm right thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get privileges to that. Oh. <laughs> but the job we do, I've been hooked up this. So, so try and get my both sides of the brain, get your hand eye coordination warmed up. Yep. Uh, that's pretty much it. And then it's just stole. And then, and then, well, and then you get people throwing coins at you and get some tips as well. Make <laughs> <laughs> good money while you're there. Yeah, by your lands. But if you have some busking thing happening, then what else? Powders are probably ain't getting in cheaper, right? But yeah, and if, uh, and if everyone knows out there where to get powders and primer, please let the pupi show know first. So um, we took you out to the range and you shot the pupi show uh, course of fire. What did you think of the sage? Good sage. Uh, had some challenges, the monkeys for you. Yeah, had that PTSD from Thailand there. <laughs> really, lots of options as well. So the show on the options, the entry needs options, uh, which I really liked. Yeah. Thought it was a good sale. Awesome. Okay, great. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, are you curious to see how you went? I am. All right. Well, let's take a look at the video and see how you went. Okay. Are you ready? Stand by. All right, he's up fire quickly. Another bullet chance. Kate is amazing. I think he's hit the Germany, all right. He's shooting this very similar to what Jody shot. All right. Looked a well run save, Joe. I think we did that really well. Look, Breeze, it was a dead boss, and I get rid of Spurs, look pretty quick. But the question is, how quick and how smooth, and what points did you score? Are you ready to find out? Please. All right, let's take a look. So, write this down. And, okay, Alistair, you've got 21 alphas. Well, one less than Jody. I'm less than Jody. Seven Charlies. Jody got six. Two deltas. Same as Jody. But you did it in a time of 24.98. So it's a really good time. Which brought out come with a hit factor of 5.124. Well done. Thank you. So Jody was 4.439, which puts Ali in first place. Yep. yep. Ali, you've got a lot to offer Jody. One of those. Alistair, that was a great run. That puts you at the top of the leaderboard. Congratulations again, Cookie. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me on the show. Would you join us again another time? I'd love to join you again and to show you how much I appreciate you guys inviting a world in something. Oh, yeah. I, I told mate. Is it funny? No, I'm going to damn. This is sponsorship. <laughs> but maybe one day it'll be worth something. <laughs> so it's a world sh official world shoot shirt that I would like to give you guys. That's, that's the nice. All the selves them. But to tell you what, though, can we get your signature on? You certainly can. Listen, that here's the game. Superstar, the rock star, superstar, Sydney Chubby. Find a good spot. Chuck that on there. And I guess that's what we're in. A lot of us shooters are aiming for is to uh, get on this grass. Feet. Well, if you have a bit of grass, but compete uh, on a world level, and that'd be awesome. Oh, look, it's that's a long sea picture, man. Yeah. I'll write 2023. <laughs> cool. That's, it, was, it was one of the, my best moments. I was here with that death. So, well, congratulations on competing on that real list. Uh, oh, oh, right there. If we get a frame, we make a part of the set. Absolutely. And if, uh, if any other guests come on, feel free. No. But I mean, it's a brick head, so Brad can give us. Thank you so much. Well, that's it. Truly brick head. It's a lot. It's a pleasure having you. And um, thanks for giving us the insight on um, how you started and how you're progressing and, and all the work you're actually doing for IPS seeing Stripe events. Thanks for the opportunity. And if I may uh, take one more opportunity. Of course, Shen. For a quick free plug. Uh, yep, so myself and Timmy Gamages are running the Victoria Police Emergency Services Games match uh, coming up on April 2nd at SSBC. Anyways, in CFA, self life setting, uh, obviously the Emergency Services uh, can apply to um, shoot the match. There's a little bit of spots, so get in quick. Awesome. Um, I reckon Pupi should, should go there. We should cover that. We should cover that. Absolutely. Love to mention in the comments if you want us to cover it. I, I think we should. You're always welcome. Before you leave, we have to do this with every guest we have on. It is the Pupi Show 10 questions in about 20 seconds. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. Cookie. Favourite IPSC gun? Uh, stop two. Oh. Swingers or bobbers? Sweet. Favourite IPSC moment? Uh, I go to Thailand presenting Australia in the video too. Which did Joe uh, wasn't. And to just to clarify once again. Top 100 in the world. Uh, most embarrassing IPSC moment? Uh, that would probably be when Bobby Heron's time of a court on my holster and I stood up over Dalton's hand and he's trapped the outfit and trying to get the shit out the best. Did you do a ration? 
I did. 100% you should have. <laughs> Weirdest thing in your range bag. Uh, coal, compress, uh, you know, those little chemical ones that you put on. When, but that's so, not man. Yeah, that's just mitigation of risk. <laughs> we need to go through his range bag, dude. There must be something. Fact, there's got to be something else in there. Um, best IPSC snack? Bananas. Bananas? Uh, high acid factor. Oh, you're a fallen. It's well, hands and nasty. That is awesome. Uh, most valuable IPSC lesson blunt? Uh, probably uh, make sure you lottery max. <laughs> okay, I, that is a full on state times. Uh, worst IPSC gun? Uh, that would be the uh, Model 10 K frame revolver. Thank Christ you didn't say <laughs> There's yes. this, this polar stare that we might actually get sports. I fought it out with that then. The craziest IPSC story. Uh, yep, shooting the world's shoot, and one of our team members got disqualified. But luckily, uh, the camera angles that we had, um, uh, meant there was a bit of rizzle down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that got reviewed, and he was reset. Well, now this was very lucky, very lucky video openers. That's a good thing. That's very 10 questions. I've just got one final thing I do want to ask you. Um, so you've reasonably accomplished shooting now at a master grade level. Um, thinking back and going back to your earlier years of shooting, what advice would you give your then self? Uh, seek training from a pro uh, as soon as you can. Yeah, any means professional, just to be absolutely. And a trainer. Thanks again for coming out. Hey, awesome. Blossom. You know what? Thank you so much. We'll get you out of the top. Cheers. Thanks, friends. Wow, didn't cookies just nail that stage? Definitely. Just railed it, man. That was awesome. Um, mate, well done. Sorry, Jody. It looks like he may have bumped you out of first place. So, Jody, you are coming second because you've got a cookie on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for the shadow challenge. Some say his hands are covered in thousands of tiny microscopic gripping hairs like a spider. And yet he wears the finest gloves made from vegan silk. All I know is we call him the shadow. Next shadow challenge, Mr. Shadow. Why, thank you, sir. Or oh, ma'am. I'm not quite sure yet. Oh, the shadow says your next challenge is an all round short course of fire. There is one IPSC classic popper, one IPSC steel plate, and three IPSC classic targets. One of those targets is on a swinger. Shadow says the order must be fired like this. Popper, plate, two targets, and then the swinger. Uh, points equal hit factor. Poison time equal hit factor. Best hit factor wins. This is going to be fun. Stick around. Let's check this out. Are you ready? Stand by. Well, Dean, it looks like you're the show champion for this week. Well done, Dean. Tell you what, you moved pretty fast through that stage, and don't get a big head about that. <laughs> That's a big head about it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Look, anytime I can get within a second of the shadow, I'm pretty thrilled. Thank you. You're going to take that now. I'll take that as a win. 100%. So, guys, I was thinking about, you know, shooting, and, you know, I, ideally with IPSC, we want to grow the bottom bottom level right well how most of people into the sport where well, yeah more uh young guys and girls into the sport uh, more women into the sport um ideally you know you've got kids i've got kids and uh you just had a child uh, congratulations on that by the way hey. um so thinking about this and they're about to come of age where we can start introducing them to shooting but you know what are the sort of things we could do before that so before 12 years, oh, man, uh, in Australia, guys, the, the minimum age for, for shooting in Australia is 12 years old. 12 years old. Um, in the rest of the world, it's probably different. And let us know in the comments below exactly where you are in, the, in what country you are and 
when they can start shooting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm very curious. We can't have airsoft. We can't have gel blasters in Victoria. Oh. In some other states, they can. So we're a little bit limited. Yeah, every state is different, which is really weird. So, um, you know, I was thinking, um, you know, a really good way to get kids into the idea of, you know, safe gun handling and things like that without having to get them actually handling a firearm is to start using something like a Nerf gun. It's a great idea to sort of teach them, you know, finger out of the yeah, two gun gun, um, break the slide. Why don't we do a studio challenge where we've got to shoot Nerf guns and we've got to shoot it only through the Alpha? Okay, that sounds like a plan to me. Let's right. do it. That could be some fun. <laughs> Let's do it. This is insane. We brought pistols, you brought a big guns, baby. 100%. This is a compensation thing. 100%. <laughs> All right, well, you can try your big gun. We'll see how we go. We're going to shoot alphas and that's it. Teach the teach the young guy. So we're going to go through the hole. This is where it counts. We'll, we'll go through the hole. We'll the hole. Who wants to go first? Andy, you're up. I'll just stop you in. Are you ready? Stand by. Yeah, I think you got a squid. <laughs> Stand by. Go on, go on, I want to be. Are you ready? Stand by. Beep. If you are finished unloading, you need to belt, you're done. <laughs> Beep. I'm out the floor. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm Hit the subscribe button for us, hit the like button for us, smash that notification bell so you know what we're coming up next. That'll help YouTube get this out to more people and we have an IPSC show that no one's ever had before, which will be awesome. And if you want to support the show and help us build the show bigger and better, join our Patreon in the link below. It includes discounts, behind the scenes footage, and a place where you can chat with us personally. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. Well, for them. Yeah. We get to chat with us personally all the time. That's right. I had another talk to me. <laughs> That's all there is for today's show. Thanks, Cookie, for joining us, and thank you all for tuning in. Uh, remember to run fast, shoot straight. We'll see you next time on the Pew Pew Show. <laughs> <laughs>